Hey, praise the Lord. This is Brother Clinton. Welcome to my office once again. It is the fourth day of the week, the 13th of January, the year of our Lord, 2016, 5776. I just want to make a short video right now to explain something for a sister who wrote. She asked me about Deuteronomy 24, verse 4. Uh, she and I have been having a discussion about a particular situation in her life concerning marriage and divorce. And I just want to want to read these, this passage of Scripture for you, and then I would like to clarify something. And may God bless the reading of His Word. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 24, verses 1 through 4. When a man hath taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he hath found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement, and give it in her hand, and send her out of his house. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. And if the latter husband hate her, and write her a bill of divorcement, and giveth it in her hand, and send her out of his house, or if the latter husband die, which took her to be his wife, her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife, after that she is defiled. For that is abomination before the Lord, and thou shalt not cause the land to sin, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. Many people stumble on that, and of a truth, I... There was a while, a time a while back when I didn't understand this either, and I kept asking the Lord about it, and He did reveal it, and He does reveal things to those who seek Him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He said, Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. And He meant that. Praise the Lord. So, a lot of people misunderstand this passage of the Scripture, specifically verse 4, and they take this to mean that if they're divorced from a husband or a wife, that they can't go back to their husband or wife. Um, but that's not the case, and let me just show you why. Let me just give you one reason why, and then we'll go back to, to uh, Deuteronomy. But let me show you something in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And I have to find the verse. I'm not sure exactly which verse it's in. Um... It's in verse 11. Let me read verses 10 and 11. <clears throat> it says, And unto the married I command, yet not I but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried, or be reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. So a woman that is departed from her husband must remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. Notice that the scripture doesn't use the word divorce here. There's, because the Bible's not talking about divorce. Paul's not talking about divorce. He's talking about a woman who has departed from her husband. Okay, this doesn't mean divorce. Now let's go back and, well, first of all, let me just reiterate. This says, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. So Paul is saying here that it's a good and a right thing for her to be reconciled to her husband. And he doesn't say anything about causing the land to sin and that the husband may not take her back again. The reason is because these two things have nothing to do with each other. They're not the same thing, and I will explain that to you. In Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 1, the scripture says, When a man hath taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes because he hath found some uncleanness in her. What this is talking about, and I'm not going to change things around or use Hebrew or Greek language, foreign languages, to try to confuse you and tell you that words don't mean what they say. They mean what they say. It's very simple. When a man hath taken a wife and married her, okay, when a man, what, what does it mean when a man takes a wife? It means he becomes betrothed, okay, when he takes a wife. And marry her, to marry her means to take her into the marriage chamber and consummate marriage with her, just like Abraham did, just like Isaac did, okay, and when a man hath taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he hath found some uncleanness in her. Well, what does this mean? It means what the Bible says it means, and Jesus explained it in Matthew chapter 5, verse 32. And let's go there. Matthew chapter 5, verse 32 says, But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery, and whosoever shall marry her that is divorced committeth adultery. And Jesus said the same thing in another conversation in the 19th chapter of Matthew. In verse 9, it says, And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. 
and whosoever marrieth her which is put away doth commit adultery. So Jesus said here in two different instances, he said, if a man shall put away his wife for any reason other than the cause of fornication, he causes her to commit adultery, and he commits adultery if he puts her away and marries another woman. Okay? What does it mean except for fornication? Well, what it means clearly, according to the scripture, is when a bride is found guilty of having been sexually unfaithful to her husband while they were betrothed. While they were betrothed, that means engaged. Okay, look at the example of Joseph and Mary. Let's go to Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 20. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, betrothed, engaged. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Okay, so Mary was espoused to Joseph, but they hadn't come together yet. And she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, wait, wait a second. Joseph, her husband. The Bible says Joseph was her husband. Well, they were betrothed, but they hadn't come together yet come together yet. That means they hadn't consummated their marriage. They hadn't had intimacy together yet. But they were betrothed. And yet the Bible says that Joseph was her husband, not her fiancé. The word fiancé is not in the Bible. Joseph was her husband. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. Oh, he was a just man. That means that he believed and obeyed the word of God and kept the commandments of God. And he didn't want to make her a public example, so he was minded to put her away privily, secretly, without telling anybody. Why was Joseph minded to put her away? Because of Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 1. When a man hath taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he hath found some uncleanness in her, then let him give her a writing of divorcement, and give it in her hand, and send her out of his house. You see? So... Deuteronomy chapter 24 is talking about when a bride has been found to have been unfaithful to her spouse, her husband, before their wedding, during their betrothal, during their espousal period. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy girlfriend, Oh, wait a second. No, it doesn't say girlfriend, does it? It says wife. Mary, thy wife. Mary was his wife. Joseph was Mary's husband, and Mary was his wife. They were espoused to one another, but they had not yet come together to consummate their marriage. See, betrothal is part of a marriage, or espousal is part of a marriage. The man and the wife are considered married because they are in a marriage, but it is a part of a marriage where the bride is being proven to see that she will be faithful. And if on the wedding night she proves to be unfaithful, or she proves to have been unfaithful, I should say, and the husband finds some uncleanness in her, then he has the right to give her a writing of divorcement and to put her away, and she can go and be another man's wife. Okay? If that's the case, let's go back to Deuteronomy. Chapter 24, verse 2. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. And if the latter husband hate her, and write her a bill of divorcement, and give it in her hand, and sendeth her out of his house, or if the latter husband die, which took her to be his wife. Her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife, after that she is defiled. Okay, now let's stop there and talk about that for a minute. This is talking about when a man has taken a wife and married her, and on the wedding night he found that she was unclean. He found that she had not been a virgin. He found that she had been unfaithful to him during their betrothal period. And... She was sexually unfaithful before their, their wedding night. And so on the wedding night, he has the right to give her a bill of divorcement and send her out of his house. He doesn't have to, but he can if he wants to. He can take her if he wants to, but he has the option at that point to give her a writing of divorcement. That's the only provision for divorce, is for a man to give his wife a writing of divorcement on their wedding night if he has found that she has been sexually unfaithful during their betrothal period. That's the only provision in the Bible for a man to divorce his wife and marry another woman. That's the only provision. So, in Deuteronomy chapter 24, verses 1 through 4, this is talking about when a man has taken a wife and married her, and he finds on the wedding night that she has some uncleanness in her, which means that she's been guilty of fornication, which means that she's been with another man 
during their espousal or betrothal period. And if that's the case, the, the husband has the right to give her a writing of divorcement, a writing of divorcement, and put her out of his house. And she is free to go be another man's wife. And if the other man gives her a writing of divorcement, or if he dies and, and she wants to go back to her former husband, the former husband may not take her again to be his wife. Why not? Because this woman, during their betrothal period, proved herself to be a whore. She was whoring herself. She had been guilty of fornication. So he, on the wedding night, gave her a writing of divorcement. This does not apply to people who are married, who have been engaged, who have gone to the wedding, who have gotten married to each other, lived together as husband and wife, and then gotten divorced. This does not apply to those people. This applies to a man who gave his wife a writing of divorcement on their wedding night when he found that she had been guilty of fornication during their betrothal period. And for that reason, this man may not take her again to be his wife because she is defiled. Because she is defiled. Okay, This does not apply to a married couple who have lived together as a married couple. They've been, they, they were engaged, they had their wedding, they've been living together as a married couple, and all of a sudden they got divorced, maybe because one of them committed adultery, or for whatever other reason. This does not apply to those people. You see, if you have been married to a woman, lawfully married to a woman, what I mean by lawfully is if that woman was not married to anyone else at the time, and neither were you, okay? It was your first marriage, and it was her first marriage, and you were lawfully married, and all of a sudden you got divorced for some reason. That does not mean that you are unable to reconcile to each other. Okay, this passage of Scripture, Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 4, is not referring to people that live together as husband and wife and then got divorced, saying that they can't reconcile to one another. That's not what it's saying at all. It's referring to something totally different. And that's what I wanted to make clear, and I hope this is clear to you, sister who wrote, and also to many of you out there who have been wondering the same thing. When you get engaged and you go to the wedding, you have, you have your wedding and you consummate the marriage, and then you live together as husband and wife, you are one flesh, okay? You are one flesh, and what God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. If you get divorced, the, the judge who grants you a divorce is granting a divorce concerning the contract that you had with the state. He's not granting you a divorce concerning the covenant that you have with your spouse. That covenant lasts and is binding as long as you both live. So if you have been married and divorced and your spouse is somewhere in the world, maybe even married to someone else or whatever, and you desire to reconcile with that spouse, that's a good and a right thing. If that person will have it, okay, it's, you know, that, that person's will is involved in it too. But if that person would like to be reconciled or you would like to be reconciled, that is a good thing and a right thing because you are spouses. You are married to that person still. Okay, The fact that you're not living together in the same house or that one of you or both of you may be living in adultery with another person doesn't mean that you can't reconcile to one another again. You can, and it's a good and a right thing for you to do so. In fact, the scripture says that, but let the woman who has departed from her husband be, hey, let her remain unmarried or let her be reconciled to her husband. So I hope this has cleared up this situation for you. I hope you understand. And for those of you who need a, a little more teaching and understanding on the subject of mar marriage and divorce, I'm going to refer you to an epistle on the Sword of the Valley website called Marriage and Divorce, which will explain in detail from the scripture the, what the Bible says about marriage and divorce and, and remarriage and adultery. And so I'm going to leave a link to that below in the information box, and I hope that you'll check it out. It's called Marriage and Divorce. So I leave you here, and I, because I don't want to make this video too long, and as always, if you have any earnest questions, I am here for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, peace.